Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here with another comparison video. You know I'm doing those. So I would suggest you go back and check them out. Um, the ones that I've done in the past, if you're interested in teams like uh, the Texas Rangers or the Yankees. Um, the Yankees was good because I actually collaborated with another channel um, on that. So that's an interesting one. Um, the White Sox versus Seattle, the White Sox versus the Cubbies. So yeah, I've got about seven of them I've already done. I think this is like number eight right here. And this is the Houston Astros, as you can see by the title card that I have up on the screen right now. So let me see if I can move my face a little bit here, try to get it somewhat out of the way. But anyway, um, Today we are going to, to do a comparison of the White Sox of 2020 against the Houston Astros in 2020. So just to recap, we're going to go over the um, Chicago White Sox. They uh, And just really quickly, because I do this in every video, I do a quick recap of the White Sox. Last year, the White Sox were 35 and 25. We tied technically for second in the AL Central, but we were really the third place team because the team we were tied with was the Cleveland Indians, and we had a worse record against the Indians head to head. So here is the White Sox projected lineup. Now this is from, and I wanna say this about both teams, the White Sox and the Astros. I got this information all off of Roto Champ. OK, so you can leave a comment and say this guy is. Oh, and that's another thing. If, if there had been a trade after this video, then, yeah, obviously, if we traded somebody away or we obtained somebody or the Astros traded someone else away or they obtained somebody, then obviously this is a little out of date. But as I'm recording this and according to RotoChamp online, these are the projected lineups rotations, bench, and bullpen. So if you want to leave a comment and say, hey, this guy is probably not going to pitch in 2021, or this guy is not going to be in our rotation, or this guy is whatever you want to say, that's fine. But just remember, I got it off of RotoChamp, so go complain to them. So anyway, the lineup, the projected possible lineup, and again, this is, you know, it's up to Tony La Russa, but this is what RotoChamp gave me, would be Tim Anderson at shortstop. In fact, I don't really even believe this is a decent lineup, so I hope this isn't it. But anyway, Tim Anderson leading off at shortstop, uh, Adam Eaton or Adam Engel, depending on whether a righty or a lefty is on the mound in right field, Nick Madrigal at second, Yes, Monty Grandal at catcher, Jose Abreu at first base, Eloy Jimenez in left field or at DH, potentially, Johan Moncada at third base, Lewis Robert in center. Now, last year was uh, Lewis Robert's rookie season. He hit 251. He flashed a little bit of power, but really what he flashed was a great glove. He was he got the gold glove in center or in the outfield for the American League. So. Um, he's great defensively, and the offense, I think, will come around sooner or later. And then possibly Lurie, Lurie Garcia at DH or left field, maybe to start the season out, but that depends on Andrew Vaughn, whether Andrew Vaughn makes the team. And we'll talk about Andrew Vaughn in a minute. So anyway, moving on, you've got the potential rotation right here. Uh, Lance Lynn, we got a nice picture of Lance Lynn with the Texas Rangers because that's the team that he was on last year. And that's the team we got him from. Um, Luis Giolito, who is always very good. He's been excellent the last two seasons. There's no reason to believe that he'll, that, you know, it'll be any different in 2021. The White Sox right now are trying to get him under a long-term contract. We'll see if they can do that. Dallas Keuchel. Dylan Cease, and then I have the uh, three-headed monster in the fifth spot of Michael Kopech, Ronaldo Lopez, or Carlos Rodon, who we recently brought back. 
on a team-friendly deal um, because Michael Kopech may not start the season on the White Sox roster. He didn't pitch last year at all. He was coming off Tommy John surgery last year, but he opted out because possibly because of the pandemic and maybe for some other reason, other personal reasons. So he, since he didn't pitch at all, um, the White Sox may want to start the season with him in the minor leagues and then, you know, possibly start with Ronaldo Lopez as their, their fifth starter or Carlos Rodon, who has started for them in the past. We'll see. It's, again, it's up to Tony La Russa how they handle that. Um, but I like their, I like, I definitely like their top three. And even Dylan Cease um, wasn't too bad last year and should continue to improve, or at least I'm hoping that. So now you got the White Sox bullpen. And uh, you can see I've got a photo of the newly acquired Liam Hendricks. I expect he'll probably be the closer. And, uh, you know, he will. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any other reason to have brought him in except to be the closer. And especially since we lost Colome and Colome was our closer last year. Then you got Evan Marshall, Cody Hewer. Aaron Bummer, Matt Foster, Garrett Crotchet, who can throw over 100 miles an hour, Jimmy Cordero, Jace Fry, a lefty out of there, out of the bullpen. And then again, I've got Carlos Rodon and Ronaldo Lopez listed there. Whoever doesn't start or isn't in the starting rotation will probably be an extra bullpen arm. That's, again, depending on what Tony La Russa thinks. And anyway, um, yeah, we can move myself over here a little bit so you can see the nice picture of Liam Hendricks. So anyway, uh, yeah, so that's that's the bullpen. I like this bullpen. It's got some, some power arms out there, and then it's also got some finesse guys that know how to pitch. So now you have the... Uh, I'm going to have to move myself around, I guess. Um, you have the... Uh, White Sox bench options. And at the top, you can see I've got Andrew Vaughn listed. Andrew Vaughn, um, if he makes the team, I would expect him to be the DH or the DH slash first baseman and switch back and forth with Abreu, one of them being the DH, one being the, um, the first baseman on whatever day. The uh, other one is not doing the opposite thing. Um, and then that would free up Lurie Garcia. As you can see, I have him listed at the bottom and in parentheses, I wrote if Vaughn makes the team because Lurie Garcia is probably better suited as a bench guy, as like a utility guy. He can play a lot of positions. He can play the outfield, definitely both corner outfields. He can play third, he can play second, he can play short. So I think he's better suited as a super utility guy off the bench. And then, of course, you got Nicky Delmonico. He's been with the team for several years. Danny Mendick, who was up last year um, and uh, didn't, didn't look too bad at all. Uh, he would be a backup infielder. Uh, Nick Williams, who we recently acquired, he was recently on the Phillies, I believe. And, of course, Nick, I, don't, I don't remember if I said Mick or Adolfo. We also have Zach Collins. He'll probably be the backup catcher. However... I see that as a weakness for the White Sox. If you've seen any of the previous videos I've done, you know that I consider that to be a weakness. He is not very good. Uh, as de Definitely as a defensive catcher, he's not good. And he didn't even really hit that well last year in the limited time that he saw. So, I mean, in general, he's supposed to be a good hitter, but that still doesn't make him a very good catcher. So we need somebody a little bit more reliable back there um, at catcher. So I hope the White Sox do go out and get that. So that brings us to Houston. So you got the Houston Astros. Last year, they were 29 and 31. Their manager is Dusty Baker. I believe they made the playoffs because of the extended uh, playoff pool last year. And that would be the only reason that they would have made it with a 29 and 31 record. However, coming down the stretch, they were 
uh, a lot better than they had been earlier in the year. So they they kind of made a late season um, a late season push to get into the playoffs, which they did. So now you've got their projected lineup, and let me make sure that that's. Uh, Yeah. So anyway, there's their projected lineup. You can see I got the picture of uh, Alex Bregman off to the side there. So their lineup would be, would line up something like along the lines of Jose Altuve at second, Kyle Tucker in left or at DH, Alex Bregman at third, Michael Brantley in center, Jordan Alvarez at DH, Carlos Correa at short, Yuli Gurriel at first, Miles Straw in right, and Jason Castro at catcher. Now, most of these guys are well-known. Uh, Kyle Tucker, maybe not as much, although he has been up with the Astros. I know that. And Miles Straw last year, got a he got a look in the major leagues with the Astros. He had 82 at-bats, and he hit 207 with no home runs. So hopefully um, they're thinking that, uh, well, I would assume that they're thinking that um, with that exposure and with some, you know, and being a full-time starter all the time for the Astros next year, he would be much better than that. So now you got their, the Astros projected rotation. And that would line up something like Zach Grenke, Framber Valdez, Lance McCullers, Jose Urquidy, and Kristen Javier, or Javier, however you pronounce it. Of course, Grenke is well known. Framber Valdez last year was 5-3 and three with a 357 earned run average. McCullers last year was 3-3 three and three with a 393 earned run average. And Urquidy only pitched a little bit last year. He was one and one with a 273 earned run average, but only had five starts in 2020. So that's how they line up. I think probably um, Verlander may be out for the year with an injury or recovering from Tommy John or recovering from an injury of some sort. I'm not so sure. However, um, even if he doesn't start the year, maybe he'll come back later in the year. I'm not I'm not sure. But I didn't write him down because Roto Champ didn't write him down. So we are not going to assume that he will that uh, Mr. Um, Verlander will be on the team next year. So they will be missing him. Now that brings us to the Astros bullpen. And let me move this up a little bit because my photo is out of the uh, frame. So there you've got uh, Ryan Presley and he would be the closer. And he, as, this, as the, uh, the graphic says, he has the highest spin curve in baseball, curve um, uh, spin rate. Then you got Joe Smith. Joe Smith has been with the Astros for a, a few years. And also, let me, here, there you go. Now you can see that it says that. Uh, Joe Smith, Anoli Paredes, Brian Abreu, Andre Scrub, Ryan Stanek. Of course, Ryan Stanek uh, was uh, formerly of the um, Tampa Bay Rays, so he's been around the league for a while. Chris Davinsky, we know Chris Davinsky is quite good. Joe Biagini, Austin Pruitt, who was also previously on the Tampa Bay Rays and is now on the Astros. Although last year, I think he was on the Astros last year. And then Nivaldo Rodriguez, who I don't really know much about at all. So that is how their bullpen lines up. And that brings us to the Astros bench. And there you got a lot of guys that I don't know a lot about. Chaz McCormick, Abraham Toro, Martin Maldonado is their backup catcher. I do know a lot about him. He's on one of my Stratomatic teams, uh, or he was for several years. I love Martin Maldonado, but he's a good defensive catcher. He's not a great hitter. 
and hasn't been for quite some time. Garrett Stubbs, Almedis Diaz, who's a shortstop, an infielder. Steven Souza, who is an outfielder and um, was, I believe he was probably injured last year. I don't know if he played last year. I'm not sure. But he used to be a starter. He used to be very good. Um, hopefully he can recapture some of that magic. You may know him as one of the outfielders that made a great catch. I don't remember if it was the last out. But it was a great catch on a, a Jordan Jordan Zimmerman no-hitter when the two of them were with the Washington Nationals. And then, of course, you got Taylor Jones. I don't know much about Taylor Jones, to be honest with you. So that's their bench. So now we're going to go over a few tidbits about the team uh, or about this matchup. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that we play Houston on June 17th to the 19th and then from July 16th to the 18th. So we got six games against the Astros. In looking at these two teams side by side, and I'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks, but looking at them side by side, I think the lineups are comparable. Um, and maybe Houston's is even a little better. Um, I think we probably have more players in the lineup that are good and established um, and, you know, known to be really good. Like Lurie Garcia is the only guy that's not really a great hitter. The other, all of the others are, are known and are, are established. But the guys that Houston has that are good are really, really good. Like Bregman and, um, you know, um, well, the, you know, the Korea and El Tuve. I mean, those guys are great hitters. So, and then you got, um, and then my last tidbit about this is it's going to be interesting to see Tony La Russa manage against Dusty Baker again. They, if you would remember, uh, years and years ago, they were both in the, um, back in the 90s, they were both managing in the National League. Tony La Russa was managing the Cardinals at the time, and at various times, Dusty Baker was the Cubs and uh, Giants manager. And Reds, I believe, even. He managed the Reds, too. So it's going to be interesting to see those guys manage against each other again. So those are the notes I've got on this matchup. I think six games, they're all going to be really close. I think they're going to be close games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they went three and three against each other, or one of them wins the series maybe four to two. Uh, but I don't expect any either one of them is going to blow the other one off the ball and, you know, like really dominate in the series and go five and one or six and oh. This is going to be a good series. Um, luckily, the uh, Astros are in the West, so we only face them six times. Um, that should help us because uh, the Central is not very good. Uh even the uh, the Indians are like dismantling. So it's really going to be us and the Twins, I think, in the Central. So it's good that we're playing in the Central. The West has a lot of teams that are stacking up. Not only um, Houston, but the Angels. I also did the Angels video. You should go back and check that out. I think I will put a link to all of those in the description, all of the past ones that I did. So you can go check those out as you want. But what do you guys think, um, White Sox fans, Houston fans? If I forgot something, if I left somebody out, um, that's, you know, let me know. It's always, I, I have no problem. I'm not, you know, I'm not the all-knowing Oz, so I don't know everything about all the other teams. I just go by what RotoChamp says. But if you're a Houston fan and you live in, maybe you live in the Houston area, and you know that, you know, this guy is not going to be here or this guy's not going to be doing this, then, hey, let me know. Uh, you know, let us all know. Educate all of us. So, but, yeah, um, I think it's going to be a good series. But I want to hear what all of you guys out there think, the White Sox fans, the Houston fans, the baseball fans. But for right now, that will be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.